Hypocrisy. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome. What the? F what's up, guys? Welcome to Lost Planning the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, small law firm in central Minnesota. Very sorry for hitting the, uh, hit the mute, hit the mute button. What's this microphone doing? Very, very uh, inconvenient microphone. How you doing, guys? Welcome to the show. So I got down to do the start the show and I realized that my hair looked even worse than it does now. But um, you can all ridicule me. It's fine. It's free ridicule Thursday, which is where you don't even have to super chat to make fun of me. Which sounds like every day when you really get down to it. But, you know, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Hi, guys. Ah, it's actually nice to be uh it's nice to be here today. I was, um, yeah, man, earlier this week, Monday and Tuesday, I thought they were, well, Monday was a shit show because of the, uh, my sinus fucking pressure, whatever it was. I was worried I was going to have a sinus infection, but I don't think I did. Um, you know, just a urethral infection. And, uh, I was worried about that, but it, it was just a one time sinus pressure thing and it went away to, or for the most part, I mean, it's still lingering, but not a big deal. Tuesday was a good show, but both of those days, I came into the show just dragging ass. God, I got to get my fucking energy up, and I couldn't do it. So um, I took Wednesday off because uh, I needed to sleep, and it was it was good. It was good. Got a lot of rest. Here we are. I'm all, I'm all pumped for this show. Not going to sit and belabor this, though. We've got a show full of topics. A show full of topics. And... Uh, Cypher Phoenix says you have a funny nose. Hi from Duluth, by the way. Yeah, my nose is funny. Um, it actually books more shows than I do. But uh, that's fine. Um, how's it going up in Duluth? I, It's cold up there, man. Not really like now, but in general, it's cold. So why are you so skinny now? Are you okay? Um, like I said, I lost a lot of weight. And then I got sick and lost more weight. And it's hard to put it back on. Um, because I've changed my eating habits, but I've been, I've been eating a bunch of extra food to try and get that weight back. You know, you go too far, you go too far one time, one time and you're gay just one time. So, uh, so there you go. No, it's, um, working on getting, uh, got a game back about eight and a half pounds right now. Um, for now I'll actually gain more later. Uh, as I get a more regular gym schedule in, i um, been starting to go to the gym more, which is nice, but uh, I want to put weight on that is actually like, you know, not fat because I don't want to be or have fat. I like to be, I like to be a skinny fat. No, wait, I like to be just skinny. Um, no, I, I, you know, building muscle is good. You add weight when you build muscle, but I don't want to add weight and not build muscle. We're not why are we talking about this? This is not my health. This is not my health therapy. Okay. This is not my health therapy. That'll be a different show. That'll be a different show. But that being said, we've got some topics tonight. I know there's a bunch going on. Uh, the P Diddy shit is still going, still going. Um, and it doesn't have any sign. Who turned on my goddamn air conditioner? It's hot as a motherfucker in here. Um, PDD stuff is still going crazy. We're not talking about that tonight. Crowder's stuff is apparently going nuts with not gay Jared uh, dropping the, you know, the hot goss. I don't know about, like, I haven't checked in on any of it yet because I'm talking about like other topics and not following these, uh, these sort of popular, I should probably talk about popular things, but that sounds really stupid. Why would I do that when I could just talk about unpopular things? Like tonight, we're going to talk about unpopular things. Republicans. Republicans are protecting police from cameras. Down in Louisiana, there's a bill that will require, require you to remain 25 feet away from a police officer if they tell you to. So, 25 feet away from a police officer just if they ask. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. 
Nice tits. What do you say? What do you say? Um, this is interesting because the question is, the question is, what extent can the police, the state, tell you not to be somewhere that you have a legal right to be just because they're there? They're there. They're there. And, uh, you know, that's uh, that's an interesting discussion. So I thought maybe we talk about it a little bit. We talk about it a little bit. We get into that topic. Um, I know Republicans are a weird bunch because on one hand, they like freedom. And on the other hand, they like the leather bootstraps of police tyranny. And uh, it's a delicate balance to walk on the tightrope. So um, I like to I like to talk about the things they do where they're completely like government's the greatest thing on earth. And we definitely want these guys to run around with guns and shoot citizens. And then the other part of them were, were like, no, but we don't want them to like look at a Facebook page because that would be bad. But giving them a bunch of guns and like letting them run around and, and police you is fine. So I always love that dynamic. I always love that. So we're going to talk about that. Trump's lawyer, John Eastman, has been recommended for disbarment because, well, former Trump lawyer, I guess he's a former, well, he's, Former Trump's counsel, I don't, I think he he's either been disbarred or he's going to be. We'll check it out. He's been at least recommended for disbarment. And the reason, of course, is because in the 2020 elections aftermath, illegal theory too hard. He came up, he came up with a way for Trump to possibly stay in office under suspicion of election fraud. And if you know anything about how that has gone in the aftermath, Anyone, anyone who did that, they're fucked. They're going after all of the lawyers who uh, went after any election stuff. It's um, really phenomenal because how do you represent a client? If you can't represent a client because you fear disbarment, then effectively they're eliminating your right to representation. They're eliminating quite a bit of constitutional rights and just inherent rights. So, you know, we'll, we'll have to check in on that. And uh, we've seen plenty of lawyers getting punished in various ways, not just for Trump, though. Anyone unpopular. It used to be that lawyers just represented whomever. You can think back to when, um, you know, the, the ACLU represented people like Nazi, like literal Nazis. Um, I think, didn't they end up taking Andrew Englund's case I mean, they, these guys were representing the worst of the worst for uh, public perception um, speakers. The worst of the worst opinions, very dangerous opinions. Uh, those opinions might come up and stab you. They're Cuban opinions, so they might. But now lawyers have to assess how much pain they want to endure in representing a client. In the era of social media, it used to be that you just have to deal with maybe the fallout, like some Google reviews, people calling your office, all that shit, right? Okay, gotcha. Well, you can deal with that. That's not a big deal. They just go to the phone switchboard and you can shuffle them off. You don't have to answer their messages. A receptionist deals with their anger. Who fucking cares? Now, though, you have to deal with the state taking your license away. you possibly going to prison, all sorts of stuff like that. So we're going to talk about Eastman. But then on the other side, the other side of the coin, coin, you have Ken Paxson. Ken Paxson, the untouchable, unbreakable, indiscernible lawyer who has dodged every single accusation. He has been under uh, an, a felony indictment for something like two years, three years. He's been delaying and delaying. Or maybe, no, I think since 2018. I think he was indicted in 2018 and he is just now settling out his criminal case for huge like fraud charges and stuff like that something where he faced quite a bit of prison time but ken paxton is teflon man you cannot get it to stick he has finally finally beaten those charges with a plea agreement settlement or pre yeah whatever they're they're going to be dismissed we're going to talk about that as well he's hilarious because you just can't keep them down. And then we may get around to this subject, or there's some others too, but 
Stephen Breyer still sucks. Former Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer, now that he's no longer a Supreme Court Justice, can admit that he's a liberal bitch that he always has been. He's out there now commenting about how, oh, yeah, Supreme Court justices shouldn't be in for life terms. Oh, there's going to be more abortion cases and all this stuff. And he's out there whining. People are listening to him because, because, and uh, it's not, it's not good. It's Stephen Breyer. It's not good. But uh, we may, we may read into some of his, some of the stuff he's been interviewed on and, uh, and written about lately. If we get to it. And then. Who knows what else? Who knows what else? You, of course, are free to interrupt me with ideas for uh, for other topics or get opinions on things. Um, there's no, like, official way to do it. So, you know, just go ahead and throw it in the chat if you want. If I see it, maybe it'll be interesting enough for me to grab. Okay, here we go. Um, we're going to hit some, some chats that have come in, and then we're going to go into the first topic. We've got, oh, Phoenix. Phoenix uh, has... Been a one month uh, member at the lawyer level. Thank you. Grifty says, Oh my God, all the gay First Amendment auditors are going to go to Louisiana now. Yes, the First Amendment auditors. I was reading about one of those the other day. That was, that was riveting. I'm not a big fan of First Amendment auditors. Look, I love the First Amendment as much as everybody. And I'm not saying what they do is like wrong or unlawful. I just personally don't want to go to where someone is and fuck around with their work day. That's not my cup of tea, so to speak. And uh, these guys do that. They go get right in people's faces at their, at their work. And they're like, Hey, 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 I have free speech here. I have free speech. And then they get kicked out. And they're a lot of times they're wrongfully kicked out. It is a state building. They don't really have any, you know, justification for removing them other than they're fucking irritating. So it's, uh, you know, it's, they're interesting in what they do. It's fine for them. It's not for me though. It's not for me. Like leave people alone. That's my thing. But, um, oh, there, there's another first amendment issue that's out there and it is, uh, the Georgia election fraud case for Trump just had, uh, just resume having hearings after the Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade stuff. Now that dust has settled on that. The judge has, uh, brought that back in judge McAfee. And there's some argument before the court today, and and Trump's team is is arguing a uh, viewpoint based discrimination, First Amendment protection for his uh, for all of the activity that he's being charged for in the wake of January 6th. So it's a good argument. We may talk a little bit about that as well. So um, we'll see. We'll see. What we get to. We'll see. What we get to tomorrow. But you know. There's that law of self-defense says, Hey man, what's up, dude? It says just a drive by heading to bed, but been too long. Emily sends lady rag. It's her best. Oh, thank you. Tell Emily. Thank you. Not you. Like you're expected to be you, but Emily's a true gem. So tell her we say hi. All right, here we go. Oh, wait. Uh, Dallas guy 98 says, can you cover Chevron deference and the fishing case? If you haven't, I haven't covered the specific case. Um, it looks like Chevron is possibly going to go away, which would be, or at least get uh, curtailed. That would be delicious. That would be really fucking good. Speaking of delicious. Hmm. What is this? Oh, here we go. Uh, someone gave me this a long time. I got this. <laughs> Look for comparison purposes. This is how you know my nose is actually giant. Someone gave me this uh, little bottle. It's Slow River Blend from Bonbrecker. Uh, Hefweizen Whiskey from um, Austin, Texas. So I'm going to drink this, I guess. But I'm going to pour it in a glass because this is degenerate. Ah! I don't know. I don't know if this is any good. I've never had it. My rule is anything that comes in a tiny bottle usually sucks. A blend of straight wheat whiskeys, lightly macerated with lemon peel and clove. Why? Why would you do this? Hmm.
It's not bad. It's not great. Not great at all. But it's not bad. I've had way worse whiskeys. It's just it's heavy wheat on the whiskey. If you don't, uh, if you don't like weeded whiskeys, you wouldn't like this. Uh, Dallas guy ninety eight says my tumble is tweaking, and I hear six of you. I think you mean rumble. That's six of me. Well, that's cool. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's get to this. This this fucking bill in Louisiana bothers the shit out of me. But it might be fine. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. House advances bill requiring 25 foot distance from police. This is in Louisiana. Haven King says, if I fly to the U.S. without permission, but mid-flight I jump from the airplane with a parachute and land inside a foreign country embassy and request asylum, can the U.S. arrest me? So you're on the way to the United States. You're on the way to the United States, but you don't get to the United States? No, you're fine. Um, I don't, I don't know how the U S would arrest you. What are you seeking asylum from is a question. You wouldn't be an asylee from the United States unless there was some other issue, but you can fly without permission to a port of entry. You just, that's where they get turned around. So don't do that. That's a weird question. I don't know. Someone asked if the uh, purple cyber says Lamau is this his whiskey snob arc. No, I went through that a long time ago. Um, I'm not a whiskey snob. I'm just, it's not my favorite, man. Uh, I like whiskeys of all, of all shapes, sizes, prices, flavors. I just, there's something in this that's a little sour and it's very weedy, weedy. So anyway, but back to this, the, back to Louisiana, uh, just like a hurricane. A House committee moved forward with a bill Tuesday that would criminalize coming within 25 feet of an on-duty police officer if ordered to halt by the officer. Now look, I'm just going to say it. I don't recommend coming within 25 feet of an on-duty police officer that has asked you to halt. I, I just don't recommend it. You know, really anybody who's asked you to stop, don't do it. Uh, you're not, you're not Louis CK. You can't do that. Real Patriots party says, tell YouTube, you got a clean bill of health from Walgreens. That would be Biden's doctor because you did not die and are not dying. So they'll shut the fuck up with lame advice. It's like web knee jerk around here. Oh dude, it's great. Uh, yeah, look, a lot of people get concerned. They see, they see someone online and they're like, oh man, they're in danger or whatever. I can only say I feel good. It's cool. Nobody's, nobody's perfect. You can get close, but to quote Patrick Bateman, you can always be thinner. Just kidding. Anorexia is not a joke. It's bad. Intimidator 0108 says, Hey, Nick, got into Minneapolis this afternoon with some friends for anime detour after a six-hour drive. Now for a dad joke. Why? What can you say about a pig that is using the bathroom in an RV? It goes wee, wee, wee all the way home. Get out. Just, just get out. Lauren de Laguna says, come to Miami. God, this sounds fun. I really do want to go. I, I highly doubt I can make it down there on such short notice, but damn it, I want to go. So anyway. All right. Back. Back again. Guess who's back? All right, here we go. Uh, penalties for violations could include a jail term of up to 60 days and a fine of 500 bucks. The bill HB 173 has been sent to the full house for consideration. So here you go. O uh, officer orders you to halt. They're on duty. Halt, halt, halt. Like a fucking, uh, is it dagger fall guard or whatever? 
hold, hold, hold. And um, they say, well, you can't come in 25, come within 25 feet of them at that point. What they're really trying to do ostensibly is to limit uh, interference during like some of these encounters, right? People kind of crowd around the police, their cameras, they yell world star or whatever. Governor Jeff Landry's office supported the bill, whereas Governor John Bell Edwards previously vetoed a similar bill. The bill is one of several that Republican leaders have aimed to pass again now that a Republican is governor. And this is what always, this is one of my big, biggest hangups with Republicans. Biggest hangups with Republicans um, is that they are so, so, so supportive of the state almost automatically. They defer to police all the time. They constantly try to give police more power than the Constitution allows. Shit like that. And it's just frustrating. It's just frustrating because why on earth do we want the state to have more power and, and influence over us? I don't know. I don't know. Here we go. The House Committee on the Administration of Criminal Justice also advanced a bill Tuesday that would prohibit solicitation on certain highways and streets to deter panhandling. And that's good because the homeless should be catapulted into the sun. Supporters of the police bill said they want officers to be able to carry out their responsibilities safely 25 feet away from possible harm during an arrest or altercation. 25 feet's a lot of fucking feet. It's far, man. It's not close. It's not the farthest thing ever, but Jesus, like if you, that's bigger than most rooms in people's houses. But uh, yeah, uh, during an arrest or altercation, they want 25 feet of space. Is that sufficient? Is it constitutional? Good question. The author of the bill, Rep. Brian Fontenot, uh, He's a Republican from something Louisiana and went so far as to bring out a tape measure to emphasize the distance. That's what I do. Like Lady Rackets, look, it's this far to me. We're not trying to read the officer's name on his uniform as much as we are trying to articulate his actions and are his actions. When we're videoing him appropriate with his code of conduct and within his use of force. So basically, this guy is saying, all right. We're not trying to read the officer's badge or see the stitching on his shoulder pad. What we need to do is make sure he's acting within his duties and 25 feet away is plenty sufficient to do that. I don't know if that's true, though. I really don't know if that's true. Now, usually it is. if you Like, if you've got a wide view and you're sitting there watching a cop do something, sure, it's it's fine to be 25 feet away. But what if you need something up close? I mean, most of the videos I see from cops, even from body cameras up close, body cameras far away, it's all just shit. It's grainy. You can't make it out. Um, anything happens, that the frame rate's too low, uh, the compression's too bad. There's all sorts of shit going on. And you're like, I really wish it was a little closer, a little cleaner. Uh, you know, all of that. But is 25 feet sufficient? I don't know. Maybe. He says, you can see in 25 feet that clearly can be picked up on any good video surveillance or cell phone. Any good ones. Any good ones. Um, the bill has received support from individuals in several policing institutions. And this is why you know that you shouldn't do it. Here's a pro tip, guys. This is a this is a black pilled pro tip. Anytime you encounter the government and it passes a bill on another part of government, and that other part of government is like, yes, we we think that's a good change. It's bad, bad bill. It's a bad bill. Uh, it should not be passed. Frederick Little says, I'm glad you're feeling better. Also, do you know why Green Pepper couldn't practice archery? Because it didn't habanero, habanero. There you go. That's not good. That's not good. I hope, God. <sighs> so many hitmen to hire. Opponents brought up situations such as p police brutality, car accidents, and legal occurrences inside the home that would come, uh, that could come under the bill. 
you could make it unjust. These are valid concerns. Here's why. Here's why. If you have a constitutional question that impacts things like free speech, free expression, free assembly, typically First Amendment rights in particular, which if you're recording police brutality or police activity, you're usually implement or uh, invoking First Amendment protection in that act. You're, you're expecting the First Amendment to allow you to do these things. So when you have situations like police brutality, car accidents, legal occurrences inside the home, and you've got these, uh, these people being told to stay away, we have to measure the impact on their rights, the impact on their freedom. It's their freedom to be anywhere in the vicinity. We have to measure the impact of their freedom and see if it's the least restrictive impact that can be done to accomplish the purpose. So the purpose here, ostensibly, is to reduce the amount of interference in lawful police activities. So we say, okay, government's interested in that. So then we go, is this the least restrictive means to do so? That is a different question. Does this sweep up other constitutionally protected activity? Well, certainly it does. There are plenty of instances you can imagine. Oh, excuse me. Plenty of instances you can imagine where a police officer will be within 25 feet of someone. And then that person is now forced to move away from the police officer, even though they're not in the altercation, right? Or the police officer is going to prevent some other lawful passage. Maybe the person is trying to render first aid. Who knows? Any of these things could happen that would do it. And then further, you have a different analysis. The police officer's individual actions could be based uh, viewpoint-based discrimination as well. It's not necessarily neutral. The police officer has discretion to say halt to someone. They don't say halt. They can come close. So if a police officer is making the determination on whether to allow people to be close based on skin color or national origin, or maybe based on political parties, depending on where they are, if they're doing this, if they're doing that, imagine that a, a case could be made for viewpoint-based discrimination that would prevent this from being constitutional, even if it otherwise looks constitutional. So these are some of the considerations. This bill's a little complicated. It seems easy to say, oh, yeah, for officer safety, 25 feet is paramount. It'll reduce uh, instances where police get hurt or hit or whatever, get wrapped up in altercations and have to retaliate. That'll all be reduced because people aren't so close. But then you go, but people can be close to a police officer and not interfere. Certainly people can be within 25 feet of a police officer and not interfere with them. They may not like it. So we'll have to see how this goes. Uh, Bad Dragonite says, I am now officially squatting on this video. Nice. Chandler H. Barbecue and Ice says, my social media has been feeding me nothing but flat earthers and liberals. I've never been closer to depression and exhaustion. <laughs> I love flat earthers. On, ironically, they're so fucking great. They're so fucking great. Um, okay, here we go. Back to this. Bruce Riley, deputy director of VOTE, a civil rights group, recognized that there could be punishment for actual interference. But people at the scene should not be prosecuted because he said, referring to police, if you're not doing anything wrong, you shouldn't be afraid of people watching. I want you to rethink that sentence, sir. Call Jack Murphy and tell him you're out of the liminal order. That's what I need you to do. <laughs> no. I don't know. Punishment for actual interference already exists. But the people at the scene should not be prosecuted because being within 25 feet is not automatically interfering with the police officer's duties. So here we go. Uh, Terry Landry Jr., policy director of the Southern Poverty Law Center, said the bill was unnecessary. <laughs> I hate agreeing with these assholes on anything, even like words. Quote, we're creating a problem where one does not exist. Landry said we're creating additional crime where we have enough crime already on the books in Louisiana. No, not Louisiana. There's no crime there. 
Oh, God. No. Uh, Landry asks, what if I'm 26 feet away, 24 and a half? Well, and this is only a problem if you have a woman police officer who can't me- like they can't measure. Men know you're 25 feet away when you're about, you know, uh, 12 feet away. The 25 foot distance was based on the existing 21 foot rule. In police training, which is a minimum amount of distance that officers can effectively pull their weapons on a citizen, charging them with an edged weapon. Um, again, 21 foot rule is joke is a joke. It's bullshit. Uh, Bronk has explained it several times. I've seen it in the chat. 21 foot rule is garb rule is garbage. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, Lauren, I will see. I will see. It's um, it's coming up, and I'm not sure if we can get down there. If we can, it'd be super fucking fun. But obviously. The anti-panhandling measure, House Bill 97, was authored by Rep. Dixon McMacken from Baton Rouge, uh, another Republican. It pro- Oh, wait, this is the other one. Yeah. They love police, and they hate the homeless. I only agree with half of that. It prohibits solicitation on certain types of highways and streets, adding to existing panhandling laws. McMacken says it is too dangerous for people to be hanging out near highways. See, but this is the justification. This is the justification. They're like, well, we don't want people near the highway. That'd be dangerous. Well, so why, why do we, why is this always the thing that we go to? Well, it'd be dangerous for them to hang out near the, maybe they shouldn't hang out near the highway because it's dangerous. Not because there's a law. Why why is that? He said that 18 and a half to 22% of fatal and severe pedestrian crashes involve a pedestrian crossing, entering a road or walking in rural roadways. Okay, guys, look, I don't live in a city anymore. But when I did, and I joke about hating the homeless, but when I did live in the city, the homeless weren't crossing streets. Panhandlers aren't like, oh, let's just walk around across the streets. They, They pick a spot and they stay there. Like, oh, it involves a pedestrian crossing, entering a road, or walking in rural roadways. They don't cross the road. They don't need to. They're not going anywhere. They're standing on that corner for eight hours, putting in a hard day's work. <sighs> he said Louisiana had the second highest pedestrian fatality rate in the country in 2021, fourth highest in 2022. Uh, Sarah Whittington, attorney at the Justice and Accountability Center of Louisiana, testified against the bill, saying it would affect First Amendment rights and is unnecessary at the state level. She maintained that it would be better to handle the problem at the municipal level. Okay, so that's just the extra part of that fucking uh, article, which has nothing to do with the beginning part or the, the title of the article's House Advances Bill Requiring 25-Foot Distance from Police. So then they, of course, talk about the other bill that's in there. Seek the light says, I live in New Orleans. Our panhandlers are aggressive. They walk between cars, begging in front of cars, etc. Oh, those aren't panhandlers. Those are speed bumps, my friend. So anyway, we have this 25-foot rule or law in place. Well, going into place potentially. Keeping you away from the police, 25 feet. When they say halt. When they order you to stop, that's when it kicks in. If the police don't tell you to stop coming, you can keep coming, whether you're within 25 feet or with five feet. You just can't interfere with the police officer. So they have this new rule here that says 25 feet, and they can invoke it at any time. And that's actually kind of a problem. Because... If they start invoking this, the question becomes, why? Why did they invoke it? Why are they saying halt? Is it because of some constitutionally protected activity? Are they actually in danger? Are they actually trying to affect uh, an arrest or whatever without interference? Is that what's going on? Or are they infringing on someone's rights? And that that's the scary part because they're giving them an excuse to infringe on someone's right of free speech. Simply saying, well, they might be interfering if they're within 25 feet. Well, might be doesn't fucking cut it. Doesn't fucking cut it. 
So now once an officer orders someone to halt, is it justified? Is this law being used to stifle speech? Because it let's let's take a look at the bill actually. I just I just thought of this um it really depends on how the bill is worded. So we're going to take a peek at that. Here we go. Um Got it. Got him. I want the latest bill text and a grossed PDF. How many fucking pages? Two pages perfect. So here's the bill. It creates a crime of approaching a peace officer lawfully engaged in law enforcement duties. Well, what's that? Law enforcement. So the the first question is are they are they able to affect an arrest without interference well sure we want that but any any law enforcement duty that they're lawfully engaged in oh okay so the text is uh, relative to offenses affecting law enforcement to create the crime of approaching a police officer lawfully engaged in law enforcement duties to provide for a definition provide for an affirmative defense to provide for penalties and to provide for related matters cool Kate C, a.k.a. Snake Plush Kitten, says, panhandling laws, Texas or Florida's panhandle, always Texas. All right, so here we go. Approaching a peace officer lawfully engaged in law enforcement duties. No person shall knowingly or intentionally approach within 25 feet of a peace officer who is lawfully engaged in the execution of his official duties after the peace officer has ordered the person to stop approaching or to retreat. Holy shit. Like, that's really broad. They're talking about arrests and police brutality. But this is seriously just doing anything. Just doing anything that is official police business. Official police duties. Driving their car. Standing, directing traffic. Walking a beat. Anything that they're doing. Halt. Stop. 25 feet away. That's fucking insane. That's got to be unconstitutional. It's way over broad. Way over broad. All right. Peace officers shall include all individuals uh, defined, blah, blah, blah. An affirmative defense to this crime if the defendant can establish that the lawful order or command was neither received nor understood by the defendant nor capable of being received or understood under the conditions and circumstances that have existed at the time of the issuance of the order. Whoever violates the provisions of this section shall be fined. Not more than 500 bucks, not more than 60 days or both. It's a very simple bill, short, sweet to the point, which is nice, except the bill itself sucks. Bill itself sucks. Sports fans says, are you a Biden head? What's a Biden head? Like a fan of Biden? No. No, I don't like him at all. So... Louisiana courts will effectively have two options with this. They'll either have to basically restrict the enforcement to uh, law, uh, law enforcement officers, not just engage in official duties, but engage in official duties that have some sort of connection to why 25 feet might become a problem. Like again, affecting arrest, uh, beating a black person, whatever it is. And that's really what it is. <laughs> that's what it's for because they, they gang up in packs and they start hitting. Richard Stuplick says, I missed the start of this. Uh, does this include the person recording their own police interaction? They would be closer than 25 feet. Yeah, that, That's a weird thing, right? Let's say a police officer is affecting an arrest of someone right in front of them, like 10 feet away, and they're like, halt! You got to be back 25 feet. And the guy's like, but I want to get arrested. He's like, yeah, you can't video me there. What do you do with that? How on earth... Do we deal with these problems? These vagaries. Oh, that's right. The Supreme Court deals with them. Void for vagueness, unconstitutionally overbroad. This one looks like it is. At some level, at some level, the government can restrict your activity around police officers for their safety in ways that actually kind of violate constitutional rights. For example, 
if a police officer sees you and has a reasonably articulable suspicion that criminal activity is afoot, not a hand, not a wrist, not an elbow, but a foot, they can make an investigatory stop, a Terry stop, without developing probable cause or get a warrant. And at that stop, they get to search for um, or protect from anything that has happened to this person uh, or anything that this person may do to them. Um, again, so that what they're, the purpose of this investigatory stop is the police officer has a reasonably articulable belief that criminal activity is occurring. They want to look and see if they can get more information to develop probable cause to investigate further, right? So they, pull, they, they get them, they stop them, and they say, well, I also need to be safe. And so they can do like a pat down search over the clothes. And if they can identify something like a weapon that might put them in danger, they can then uh, remove that for their own safety temporarily, see if they can develop cause to, uh, you know, affect a further investigation during the arrest. But that's it. Um, and in this, in these encounters, in these encounters, you have an officer who doesn't have to have any sort of justification for what they're doing. Now they can stop people from doing other stuff. That's why this over breath uh, thing and it becomes a problem or the vagueness. What is it? What is it that you're halting? What activity are you halting here? Um, why are you halting it? When you have a, uh, these Terry stops, what they're called, but the, the investigatory stop, you still have to be able to articulate why you stopped them in the first place. And there is a bar that they have to cross before that stop becomes reasonable. If they don't cross that bar, it's not reasonable, and the search violates the Fourth Amendment. Um, I bet that this the judges, uh, well, probably the Louisiana courts, will have to curtail the way this is played out to make sure it fits within those kind of guidelines. But we also could just see it completely uh, voided out. I'm not a big fan of this. I think there are already laws that prevent interference with police officers engaged in their official duties. Stop pushing people away. Stop setting up where people can be on the assumption that they might might interfere. You, ha it's a crime to interfere. Well, it's like, but they might interfere. Well, then the, the criminal act will take care of that, right? But hey. That's how it goes. Um, let's see. Uh, Dagnar D says, First and Fifth Appeals Court ruled a law like this unconstitutional. You can't audio record it a distance. So the, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals is uh, the same, well, encompasses Louisiana. So that could be a problem for them. Um, Dagnar brings up a good point. Audio. Audio cannot be recorded at 25 feet. But the question is, do you need audio to see? Excuse me. Do you need audio to see if a police officer is acting properly? I would say yes. I would say yes. But they're going to argue no, obviously. And here's why. They're Republicans. They're Republicans. Republicans love this shit. They love cops. They love giving cops power. Dallas Guy 98 says, I hate the dart red line panhandlers. But if they're in public space, I don't see a way to legally deny. Uh, gotten worse after the First Amendment ruling. Curious what you think of the San Fran cave people. There are people living in caves in San Francisco. I mean, I thought so, but I thought that was just gay people having sex. So I'm not sure about that. I, I don't know anything about the, uh, the San Fran cave people. Hey. Speaking of bootleg, just kidding. Megan Fox, how you doing, girl? Megan Fox in the chat. Oh my God, I'm awake and Rackets is streaming. That's on you. That's that's a you problem. Megan Fox is just finding out right now that police in Louisiana are trying to keep people 25 feet away from them. Why don't they give the citizens the ability to keep Certain people 25 feet away from them so they don't get robbed as much. I don't know. Anyway, they, look, I'm not going to sit here and, and talk too much more on the story. The bill is very basic. It says a police officer can issue a halt and the person has to stay 25 feet away. Tons of problems with this. Tons of constitutional questions. And in fact, each application of that, uh, that command to halt carries with it the potential 
that they're infringing on quintessentially protected First Amendment activity. And that means it's no good. It's no good. Not a good thing. Uh, hold on one second. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. What do we have next? We're going to move on to, oh, no. Is this it? Yes, John Eastman. Oh, my God. So Republicans are protecting the police. Meanwhile, meanwhile, everybody else is after all the lawyers for Trump. All of them. Here we go. Check this out. So uh, John Eastman or judge recommends ex-Trump election lawyer John Eastman be disbarred. Look at these other headlines. Lawyers for Trump after 2020 election face professional reckon reckonings. Oh, good job. They're going after all these guys. Oh, shit. Uh, Dallas Guy 98 says, San Fran cave people dug holes on public land in a river terrace. Dangerous uh, from a geological perspective. It would uh, kind of turn Bureau of Land Management into a uh, land into a clusterfuck. Well, good. Good. No one. Uh, Bureau of Land Management can get fucked. Ooh, weaponized autism says, I'm going to take a moment to skinny shame you. Oh, yeah. Yes, do it. He says, tell your wife to make you a damn sandwich. She doesn't, she doesn't know how. She can't open peanut butter jars. And guys, I got too skinny. I can't open it for her. Uh, if you're any skinnier, you can be confused as Skeletor or AIDS-ridden Somali pirate if you dress up like Trex again. I should do that. God. Why are you funny? I will now go in blackface and I will just go as Drexel with AIDS. With AIDS. Damn. I should have thought of that before. All right, back to this thing. So uh, an attorney disciplined judge in California has recommended that ex-Trump election lawyer um, John Eastman be disbarred. According to an opinion released on Wednesday, Eastman will lose his ability to practice law within days because the court's decision involuntarily revoked his license, according to the opinion. Judge Yvette Rowland's opinion... Oh, wait, let's see. Judge Yvette Rowland. Oh, okay. Uh, she was, let's, fi oh gosh. Come on now. Uh, let's see, do we have her? Which one? Which Yvette Roland? State bar court judge. Oh, is this chick? Let's see. Da, 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 da. So she's uh, currently a partner at Dwayne Morris LLP, practicing in the areas of complex civil and commercial litigation, et cetera, et cetera. I think she was appointed because, of course, she was, right? Yeah, she was appointed uh, to this position. So her opinion comes. So she's a Democrat. She's appointed in California. I should I should mention that she's appointed in California for a Democrat. Uh, she's a Democrat. Comes after a lengthy trial about Eastman's actions as he led some of the efforts for Donald Trump to challenge his 2020 election loss. The opinion serves as a recommendation of the California Supreme Court, which will ultimately decide whether to endorse or reject the punishment. Eastman will have the opportunity to appeal the ruling. Oh, that's nice. Good job, Eastman. Still, the judge's opinion marks a major step in the consequences for lawyers who propelled false theories of election fraud on Trump's behalf. And this is one of my favorite parts of all of the record, uh, reporting on um, Trump's side of the election uh, in 2020. Everything is a false theory. Everything is false. Everything was automatically false. And they, they started that mantra immediately. It was a false theory. It was a bad theory. Uh, it was um, unfounded. It was never, ever even possible or fathomable 
that someone could interfere with the election in the United States. And if you mention the possibility of it, you're like, well, but like, I'd like to see what they have to say about it. At least like we can look at uh, evidence or something, right? Like we could ask something about what they've got to bring to the table. And the answer was no, no, you couldn't. They just, nope, sorry. None of these cases had evidence actually presented. So what you've got is these lawyers propelling theories of election fraud on Trump's behalf. And they're like, these are false theories because the, the mainstream media has been running this narrative very, very specifically. Uh, Eastman failed to uphold his primary duty of honesty and breached his ethical obligations by presenting falsehoods to bolster his legal arguments. Rowan wrote. Now, I'll clue you into something here, guys. Lawyers often often, often, often present falsehood to bolster their legal arguments. They do. The question is not, can you, can you use a falsehood? The question is, do you know if you're using a falsehood? Are you doing it knowingly? Should you know it's a falsehood? You can't always tell, right? Sometimes the best information you have turns out to be incorrect. So lawyers bringing a falsehood to the court isn't new, and it also typically isn't, um, you wouldn't see the punishment for it, but when they determine that the legal or, or that the uh, the falsehood being presented is being presented knowingly for the purpose of bolstering your argument, well, then you're in fucking trouble. Unfortunately for Eastman, he's Trump's lawyer, so all of it was going to be improper, all of it. In sum, Eastman exhibited gross negligence by making false statements about the 2020 election without conducting any meaningful investigation or verification of the information he was relying upon. Fucking amazing. Because these election theories put forward by Eastman and others required a comparison of data that was being uh, provided by third parties or, you know, um, I guess acquired in some way. Ver it required a, uh, comparing those to the original uh, data that the government held. And the government wouldn't turn that data over in any of these states. It would not tell them how the actual votes went. They would not verify or deny uh, sort of the, the numbers that they were seeing in their own review. So they were looking for this, but they, they had to compare this. The states didn't give it to them. And you have this limited window of time. Matt Wilson and I talked about it. Something like 30 days. 30 days. I think 35. To do all of your election law work after the, uh, you know, after the election is, has happened before the electors are counted. So you have 35 days to challenge this stuff. What's a meaningful investigation? Can you even do a meaningful investigation to something as massive as nationwide voter fraud in under 35 days? I don't think so. How do you investigate and verify this shit? Weaponized autism says, seriously, though, I'm glad you're starting to feel better. Yeah, man, I've been feeling good and then back down, then back up. But I, Today's good. The judge also rejected Eastman's efforts to argue that he believed lies about election fraud were true. Writing that quote, Eastman cannot avoid culpability through his willful blindness, willful blindness that is tantamount to Eastman's actual knowledge that the allegations regarding hidden ballots were false. Let's see, this is another interesting one, right? Because... They're saying he knowingly passed on this information that was false. But half, the, no, I shouldn't say half, 35, 40% of the fucking country believe that the election was, uh, that the election fraud, fraud was real, that various aspects of it were real, that the election was interfered with. There was tampering. This guy's like, no, I, I believed it. We didn't know at the time. And judges have this habit of looking back on past events with the knowledge that exists today and being like, he should have known. Of course, everybody knew. But everybody didn't know. There's a huge swath of Americans that believe 2020 election was completely stolen and that all the information we have about it is a lie. John Eastman's not allowed to believe that, though. So, damn. Decisions like the California judge's 
could further destroy the credibility of lawyers who rallied around Trump after the election while cutting them out of circles where some, like Eastman, who spent his career as a law professor and a frequent author of Supreme Court amicus briefs, have functioned as conservative thought leaders. Man. He's a law professor and conservative. Uh, he's an author of uh, Supreme Court amicus briefs. He's functioned as a conservative law professor or conservative uh, thought leader, I should say. So here you go. They're going to destroy his credibility by taking away his license, which is public. Um, they're going to say that he lied, perjured uh, himself under oath and say that he, uh, you know, he should have known. He decided to pass on falsehoods. Any investigation would have turned it up. And the whole time this guy's going, but I believed it. He's like, but I, I believed it. The numbers aren't right. The vote's not right. Plus, you should be able to assert that there's election fraud in effectively every election. Whether that fraud is sufficient to overturn an election is a different question of whether or not there's fraud. An election of a sufficient size has fraud, especially in the United States. It's very hard to punish election fraud in the U.S. because there's no tracking mechanism for who cast a fraudulent vote. Since there's no tracking mechanism for the vote, you can't easily prosecute someone voting twice or committing some sort of fraud because you can't you can't recover that data. So does he get to use that? Maybe. Maybe if it's getting appealed, he's got a shot, I guess. An attorney for Eastman, Randy Miller, that's a very basic name, Randy Miller, said in a statement Wednesday that Eastman maintains he worked as he should have on legal issues after the 2020 election for his then-client Trump. And this is where this all uh, butts heads for lawyers. Lawyers have a duty to zealously represent their clients to represent them with fervor, to ignore, to ignore signs uh, that, that their client might not be on the best footing and only operate with the assumption that your client is on the best footing until you find out specifically otherwise. You represent with zeal and gusto your client's position. In this case, Eastman says Donald Trump won the election. You see the data. You see, blah, 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 and we're going for it. And they're like, no, you can't be, you can't support that guy. And he's like, why? Why would that be so bad? But it is, but you can't support Trump. You can't support Alex Jones. You can't do these things, obviously. But this, this interferes directly with the attorney-client relationship. He's supposed to act as if Trump is right, even if Trump is wrong. But we'll see what else he says. Uh, he worked as he should have on legal issues after the 2020 election for his inclined Trump. Miller also attacked the bar's immediate revocation of his law license as unfair because he cannot work as a lawyer at a time when he needs funds to fight criminal charges in Georgia that are also related to his 2020 election work for Trump. Okay, just briefly. Just briefly. They're saying he... This is just funny. Look, revoking his law license is unfair because he needs the funds. He needs to work as a lawyer to get funds to fight criminal charges. So it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, look, <laughs> God, this guy is going to be disbarred, but don't disbar him. He needs to work as a lawyer a little longer. That's just funny to me. <laughs> Quote, any reasonable person can see the unfairness of prohibiting a presumed innocent defendant from being able to earn the funds needed to pay for the enormous expenses required to defend himself. Now, that's, it's a better point when you say it this way, but it was just funny in the first place. In the profession in which he has long been licensed, that is not justice, serves no legitimate purpose to protect the public, the statement said. Mm. Eastman was accused by the State Bar of California of harming the country by conspiring with Trump to disrupt the transfer of power. While knowing there was no valid legal theory to block Congress's certification of Joe Biden's electoral win in 2020, according to records from the disciplinary case. The funny thing is here, when you look at this paragraph, how wrong it is, Trump 
didn't conspire with anyone to disrupt the transfer of power. The transfer of power is not disrupted. While knowing there was no valid legal theory to block Congress's certification of Joe Biden's electoral win in 2020, also false. And we didn't find one. We didn't find the uh, the proper, I guess, uh, legal theory to block it. But that doesn't mean there isn't one. That doesn't mean all of them are tried. And it's crazy that this guy, like other people, other people who may be less experienced lawyers or whatever, um, is, they're advancing legal theories all over the place. And they have to be able to advance legal theory. They have to be able to go ahead and uh, try to find a way in. And other people had those legal theories, maybe, but they didn't get they didn't get tested. They didn't get before a court or a judge. Um, there's not a lot of time to do this. There's not always the opportunity. The lawyer with a valid legal theory may not be in the right state, may not be able to contact the client. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry, my uh, vault door opened abruptly and loudly got a fucking heart attack hi how's it going jesus <sighs> okay now that i'm now that i'm basically dead i'm going to call the hospital and wait for the uh, ambulance to arrive but we'll finish finish the show first but here it is. So getting back to this, there are valid legal theories to block the certification of Joe Biden's electoral win because the Supreme Court hasn't even ruled on all of the theories that were advanced. These theories were defeated not by merit of the theory in many cases, but by procedural issues, by latches, uh, for example, by a lack of standing. That doesn't mean no valid theory exists. And that's kind of a problem that the state bar of California has accused him of this in a not let's get to the, we're going to get rid of this uh, little window. Cause we're right about to do the rumble flip. After I say this, this is a novel legal issue. It has not existed in this capacity before. And certainly not with new ways of voting during a pandemic in which people have, greater access to absentee ballots than ever before, a lack of ability to properly count. Plus when you go to like places like Fulton County and you have, um, you have the main, the main counting facility having to be shut down due to burst pipes and other bullshit like that. All of this amounts to a situation that's never been reviewed by any court. So you have a novel issue. They say, well, there's no, there's no, legal theory here. There's nothing valid about a legal theory here. What could possibly be valid? And you're like, well, I don't know. We have to try a bunch of shit. Do you know how long it took them to fucking take down some of these laws uh, that exist? Like, people attacked laws for years. Roe versus Wade. 60 years of challenges finally gets taken down. Well, there's no valid theory to take down Roe versus Wade. Oh, no, there was one. Just had to get there. Took a minute. But hey, that's the problem here. The problem of representing Donald Trump or someone like Alex Jones. Again, anyone who is politically, un not politically, mass media unpopular, deep state unpopular, dangerous to power. These are the people, when you represent them, you literally take your career and sometimes your life in your hands. And they want to punish these people. We'll finish the Eastman story in a bit. Speaking of unpopular, it is time to flip over to Rumble. Uh, we'll have a little Rumble stinger. We'll flip over to Rumble. We'll shut down the YouTube stream, and we'll continue over there. And, uh, yeah, we'll keep going. And it'll be a good time. We still have uh, Ken Paxton. And we're going to talk about Stephen Breyer, the Supreme Court Justice, who is a quintessential bitch. Uh, Go Foys says that uh, you need more sunlight. Minnesota needs more sunlight. Yes. All right, guys. Uh, we'll see you in a minute. If you're on YouTube, you want to join us over on Rumble, please do click that uh, like button on the way out. And then go ahead and click on the link in the pin chat or in the description. 
and we will continue the show over there. I hope you have a good night. We'll catch you next time. The fuck it? Here we go. There it is. See you guys later. Peace. Peace.